Hello, and thank you for watching this presentation by the American Iron Society. Please support the organization by becoming a member. Go to irises.org and click on Join. Thank you. You can probably tell that I'm not used to a Zoom meeting that well, and I don't know what I'm doing, but we'll try to do the best we can. Uh, truthfully, when I started the wiki, I didn't know what I was doing either. Uh, I knew that I wanted to see something on the internet that would provide people with all the information they were looking for about irises. Uh, the biggest thing missing at the time was pictures. So I was anxious to get something that we could have pictures of every iris possible, uh, which probably is never going to be achieve achieved. But uh, that's what my goal was to have as much information as possible and accessible to everyone. And the one thing I found out was uh, you can't do this alone. You really need the help of hundreds of people. And to start out with, the two people that helped initially were Chris Lindsay, who some people may know of Iris Talk. He loaded the wiki, the first wiki, T-Wiki onto the internet for me, because I didn't know how to do that. And Catherine Button, who I look upon as like the mother of the wiki, in that she taught me how to do uh, HTML and create the pages that you would see on the wiki. I had no idea how to do any of that. And I'm still learning and it's been a long process. I knew a lot about irises, but I didn't know anything at all about creating a website. But I've tried very hard to learn and tried very hard to make it as accessible as possible. Now, when you go to the American Iris Society website, you can pull up resources and you can find the encyclopedia. And hopefully it'll load. <laughs> there we go. Um, the one thing I wanted to have happen with the encyclopedia was I wanted people to that didn't know anything about irises when they first came to it to go, oh, wow, there's a lot of different types of irises. So I wanted a whole lot of pictures on the first page. And the idea was that behind each picture, there would be a web of all the irises of that type. So we have all the different types of irises pictured on the first page. And if you scroll down, you can see there's even more uh, categories like reblooming iris, historic irises, novelty irises, bulbous irises, and uh, irids, which are the iris relatives. Um, and then there's other topics. You have uh, awards, cultivation, gardens, um, I'm sort of probably in the way, seeds, popularity polls, you can, every one of these is a live link. Uh, in case you're not familiar with it, anything in blue is a live link. And it'll take you to whatever it is you're talking about, like Irish shows. Uh, in the, on the encyclopedia, the first page, we actually, some people objected to this. The library is in the encyclopedia. A lot of people say, well, the library, the encyclopedia should be in the library. But that's not what I envisioned because I wanted people to know about irises and be looking for irises and then be able to find information about them. And in the library, you have all the books and all the articles and so forth, catalogs, et cetera. You have a video library, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. And actually this webinar eventually will be in the video library. So you can go back to it and try to figure out what I said. And uh, maybe um, it'll be helpful. So the other thing is across the top, did uh, somebody have a question? Across the top, <laughs> is uh, a number of things, a jump box, a search box. There's another search box here. There's another search down here. 
uh, there's all sorts of places where you can initiate a search. But the one thing to remember is that when you search, all each of these webs has its own search. So if you're searching the initial web, which is the front page, you're only searching the main page and the things connected with the main page. For example, um, awards, cultivation, uh, popularity polls, those are all on the main page. Uh, but none of the irises are on the main page, except when they're mentioned in awards or something like that. So if you, if you opened up a search box and typed in an iris name and you're in the main page, you're not gonna get any irises uh, unless you ask to go to the other webs. And I'll show you what happens with that the other, in a minute. Uh, so remember, each of these is a separate web. There's the whole list of iris groups. These are all live links here. As you go down, there's also a list of webs. This is what how the web address looks. And for example, um, every iris in the Spuria web, start, web starts with SPU. Every border bearded in the border bearded web starts with B, small b, and then the name of the iris. Now, knowing that, it's possible if you're in a certain web to use the jump box. I don't like the jump box. The jump box is for people that know all about the wiki, which even I don't know enough sometimes to use the jump box well. What the jump box does is you put in the name of a page and each page has its own wiki name. So knowing what that wiki name is, is something that most people are not gonna know. So using the jump box is not a really good thing, but I'll show you how it works. Uh, let's say we want to go to uh, Iris Decadence, which is a tall bearded. It would be in the A through E web because remember there's so many tall beardeds, we had to split them up into separate, into webs of different parts of the alphabet. So I'm gonna to go to A through E web. And then I could take the jump box and type in, remember it starts with T, B, and decadence. Now the other trick is you have to know how to spell it and you have to get the spelling right. So hopefully I've done that. I pressed enter and it takes me to the decadence page because that's the name of the page, TB Decadence. Every page is a wiki word. Every wiki word has two capital letters or more, but each capital letter is at the beginning of a wiki word. And there's always two, at least two wiki words in an address. So you can forget all that, but at least you know why you shouldn't use the jump box. Now, does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? Okay, let's go to... Um, oh, Bob, I think you don't put spaces in the jump box. You don't put any spaces, they're wiki words. Yes. Yeah, so wiki if, word, if, you can see the one I'm pointing to here. That's the address, that's the wiki word address. It has so, no spaces. So if it was Edith Wolford, you would put um, TB Edith Wolford, no space at all in between Correct. Edith and Wolford. Correct. And a lot of times when you're seeing a list of wiki pages, you'll see these names and they're strung together with no spaces. That's because that's the address of the page. Now, uh, Bob, Bob, there's yes. a question that, it, that was uh, typed up and it says, what if you only know the name of the iris, but not the group? How can you search for it? Okay, that's when we go to the other type of search, which I'm gonna go back to the main page, which I can do by clicking on this. And I'm gonna take you to this search box. Now I like this search box because it starts out with 
a little bit more information. And what you really want to do is do an advanced search. Now, an advanced search, let's say we knew the, the name was decadence, but we didn't know that it was a tall bearded. Okay, now I can search the title of the page. I can search the body of the page, or I can search both the body and the title. And I get a choice. Do I want to search just the main web? No. Do I want to search all public webs? Yes. Okay. Now let's look at a couple other things. There's different ways in which the results will come back to you. So it can sort by topic name first. It can sort by um, keywords, so forth. Uh, these generally you don't have to know much about, but it does limit the search results normally to 50. Okay, unless you tell it otherwise, sort of anyway. Let's just do the, uh, a search on decadence and we'll see what we get. Oh, I guess I, I'm sorry, I hit the, ah, do it again. Now I'll press enter. Now it's taking a while because when you press all public webs, there are 82,000 pages in the wiki. It's searching all 82,000. So whenever you can do a search that doesn't search all of them, that saves uh, time and space uh, on the web. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but let's just take a look here. Here's decadence. It's in the uh, one of the parents of these two border beardeds. Okay, so it's giving me the, the results from the border bearded web. Next, it's giving me results from the IB web. Next, it's giving me results from the awards because it won awards. Next, it's giving me results from the A through E web, which is where it resides. And notice it doesn't appear right away because it's picking up all of the, the uh, decadence and all of the parentages, which it was used a lot as a parent. Now you may be curious, what does this black dot mean? That means it's a page with a picture. So when you're looking at this, you can see all these pages don't have a picture of that iris. Not, it's not the picture of decadence, but the picture of the iris that it's the page of. And you can see it's in a lot of them. Now, we've gone through uh, 31 topics and we haven't found it yet. But notice this is only page one of seven pages. So when you search the entire web, you have to click the next and it'll take you to the next set of responses. So Bob, um, uh, there's a question. Uh, why isn't all public webs the default? And that's why, because it gives you this large number of... Yeah, let me, let me explain it a little bit more. It's not the default because if everybody used it all the time, we have approximately 100,000 people using the encyclopedia every month, 100,000 visits. There's about 30,000 unique uh, users during a month. You can figure out how many, if they each visit the wiki two to five times, how many, how many visits, how many searches that would be in any one minute of the day. You're probably talking about 30 to 50 to 100 searches going on all at the same time. And if all of those searches are searching all 82,000 pages, then it's gonna slow them all down. So we don't really want people searching 
all public webs unless they really don't know what type of virus it is. And that's okay if you don't go ahead and do it, but you'll get this long list in cases like something that's been used a lot. Uh, and of course you can find the, the virus itself in the list. And theoretically, this should have a black dot, which it's not working, but it, it does have pictures. Uh, and we can see that, you know, there are 50 responses. This is only page two of seven. So seven times 50 would be 350 pages that decadence appears on in the wiki. So. So then a quick follow-up to that, which I think you're going to do, says, will you be touching on what indexes or keys will give the best results fastest? And can you show an example when you wouldn't need to use, um, wouldn't want to use the, the public web, all public webs? Yeah, I mean, basically, if you know the iris, let's say, let's go to, I'm gonna to go to the species web. If we're in the web and we're looking for a species, there's a couple ways to do it. You could do the jump box, which you could start out with S P S capital S P E C capital, whatever name you wanted to put in, like let's say Palida, and you could do a jump and it would take you right to that name. So that would be really fast. But as I say, it's always a possibility you will spell it wrong. So here's another possibility. Every web that has irises in it has an alphabetical list. So let's say we went to Palida. That would be P. Here's all the P's. And we should have Palida on the, oh, I'm in Spuria, I'm sorry in the wrong web. I've done that before. I hate to admit it. Spuria and species. This is the species web. Okay, same deal. We'd go to P and here we'd find Iris pallida. And you can see the black dots showing that these irises have pictures. Now, some of these, like Pallida, Pallida rosea, is probably not a legitimate name, but it's a name that's been given and is a, a synonym for the Iris Pallida. So the information is here and it gives you something about it. So you won't, uh, you, you can be redirected to Pallida. Let's take a look at the Pallida. Um, for example, and you can see that there are a number of, these are called, uh, these are links to further information. Okay, here's the description of Palada. Uh, a lot of these descriptions for species had to be sort of recreated to sort of match because AIS didn't have a description uh, in their checklist. And these were taken from other sources. If you're interested in, you can see like there's a number of pictures of Iris pallida. One of the things we always uh, really wish for is pictures of like the full plant, uh, pictures from the side, pictures from different angles, the seeds, for example, the, the leaves with the rhizome. These are all. Uh, but let me show you something about this. I wanted people to know that there was information about references, about synonyms, about chromosome counts, about variations, about hybrids. But people don't read down the page. They go here and they just look at it. And if they don't see what they want, they think it's not there. But each one of these is a jump and this jumps a little further down the page and gives you the references that are on the same page. In some cases we have, this one I haven't translated the French to English, 
but the picture of Ray Dutay's is there for the reference and it gives you the, the reference itself, uh, which you can go to. I can show you in a minute how to do that. Uh, so there's a number of references, a number of, this is Dyke's description of Pallida. Here's synonyms. Remember that was one of the jumps that would take you down to synonyms. And these are other names that, have, that Pallida has been given. Chromosome counts. These are all the chromosome counts I could find for Pallida. And even in cultivars, there's a place for chromosome counts if there are chromosome counts. But a lot of times there just aren't. Nobody's bothered counting them. Uh, variations. These are different forms of Pallida. One of the things that I did originally was all the cultivars that were actually iris pallida, but were a special form. I copied all those here and you're, they're linked here so you can jump to the cultivars. All the hybrids of iris pallida, you can jump to. It shows what they're hybridized with. Um, for example, Oncocyclus, Aerobreds. Crested iris, Loptec, and Paltec. Um, and then for further reading, you can go do a library search for Pallida, which I'll leave off there in the moment. I'll show you about library searches in a minute. And notice on every page in the encyclopedia, it gives you a place to contact the photo manager, which is Terry Lauren and the encyclopedia manager, which is myself. So if you're trying to contact me, all you have to do is go here and it gives you my email address and you can go ahead and contact me. Now. Uh, Bob, uh, just to, um, for a question and a couple of comments before you go on. Yeah. Uh, and I think you've answered the first one. Is there a feature to jump straight to an iris by typing in a name without all of the chaff? And that's where if you know you're going, you're, what, what the iris is, what type of iris, like Spuria, you go to that web and then you can use the jump feature, type in the name um, and it takes you there. That's correct. Or okay. you can go to one of the searches and let's say, you're in the species web. So let's say if we were looking for iris pallida, you could type in pallida and you could just click title only. You don't have to click all public webs and this will take you directly there. So there's iris pallida and also pseudo pallida comes up. So uh, again, it's real quick and easy you can get right there. Okay. Um, and then there's a couple of comments. One uh, says for smartphone users, uh, use the mic search option and just say decadence iris AIS wiki and it will direct you to the page. That's, that's true. Or you can even, if you're just uh, on the internet and you Google uh, any of the irises that I'm talking about, the Iris Encyclopedia usually comes up as the first choice or the second choice or one of the early choices after you get through the whole list of paid choices that Google puts out. I don't know if you've done a Google, well, if anybody that's done a Google search lately knows that you ignore the first 10 to 15 choices. And then there's a section that says, would you like to search for such and such and such and such? You go just under that and it gives you what you really searched for. Yeah, and that was the second comment. I use Google Decadence Iris Encyclopedia to find what I'm looking for. And then uh, there's another comment. Uh, it says, Bob, you don't need to use caps in the search. All small letters works fine. <laughs> if you're doing the jump search, you need caps because they're wiki words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, caps are not not necessary otherwise. Somebody wrote in a question and asked, what about chromosome counts? Could you search for chromosome counts? Let me show you what you could do. If you searched 
if you're searching all public webs and you put in chromosome, that's going to give you way too much information. But let's say you wanted uh, 40 chromosome irises. You could say, uh, two, excuse me, just like a Google search, put in quotations, 2n equals 40, and then do a search. And this will give you all the irises that have been represented as having 40 chromosomes. So you've got Iris morsica, you've got uh, Spuria. In fact, uh, most of you probably know that almost all Spurias are 40 chromosomes, but not all of them have been counted. So you're not going to get an entire list of all the, all the uh, um, Spurias. And I did this from this, well, I did this from a species web. So it also had, um, these, these are spurias that appear in the species web as being elemental species. But if I did it from the um, main web or any of the other webs and checked all public webs, taking a minute to come up. There must be too many people searching. Well, let me see if I can go back and get unhung. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, all public webs. Let's try, let's try uh, this time 2n equals 24. One of the secrets of searching is to be able to limit your search as much as possible so you don't get too much, but also not to eliminate too many things so that you get too little. So it's, there's an art to searching. It doesn't matter whether it's on the wiki or on Google or whatever. Uh, but here we have develop of miniature dwarf irises and it talks about that. We have iris uh, illyrica, um, iris IB purple king. These have all been counted with 24 uh, different species here that have 24. Achinsonia is a Juno. It's not related anything at all close to Delicata, which is a, a Pallida, but they both have 40, 24 chromosomes. Okay. Now, um, is there any more questions about searching? There's, uh, there's one more question. Uh, it says, so can you clarify that the only way to look up an iris by name, not type, only, only is by picking all webs. No. You, could, you can pick um, any of the webs. If you know what type of iris it is, you can go to that web. Um, yeah. But I think she's saying if you don't know the type, is that oh, okay? Easy? then you're gonna to have to search all webs because you, if you don't know what type, you're not gonna know how to search for it. Uh, you have to know something about the iris to be able to limit your search. So uh, then searching all public webs would be the way to go. You could try doing a Google search, but, a, but the Google search is gonna give you less information than you would get if you did all public webs because it doesn't necessarily just pull up, um, well, it's not gonna necessarily, they're, they're, the iris could appear in several webs. I can try to think of an example that could give you that because one of the things that's happened through time is a lot of the median irises have been reclassified. Originally, the American Iris Society had three classifications for irises, dwarf, intermediate and tall bearded. So a lot of irises that were MTBs, for example, 
a lot of them were included either in the intermediate or the tall bearded section. And because of the fact that people might find references to them in as a tall bearded or as an intermediate, we've also got a place to, to send you to in those webs so that you would find them and it would redirect you to the proper web. Does that make sense? So there's, there's more ways of, of finding it than just um, finding the proper web that it's in. And then okay. there's a comment that says, what I usually do if I know the name but not the type is to Google uh, something like bearded iris decadence. The wiki entry will typically pop up. Well, that'll work, but you might get more than one wiki entry, as I said, because it would it could be a syn there could it could have synonyms in the other classes. It's the same iris, but it has uses the name under a different class because it was reclassified later. So it could have three pages, for example, uh, or it could have two pages. One and, and I, a lot of the IBs were originally considered tall beardeds. And the dwarfs went all the way up to 16 inches originally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, unfortunately, the way the registrations have been structured through the years has created a lot of problems for how we get to them on the wiki, because not everything is put in the same. Okay, another way of finding something, and this is more for topics, is to go to the, an index. And there's an index on the side of the, every page in yellow. And I like indexes because a lot of times when you're trying to find something like, say we're trying to find chromosomes, you'd get too much information or you wouldn't get anything that was as narrow as maybe you'd like. And one of the things I've been working on is that I'd like to have pedigrees for all irises. So let's take a look at about pedigrees. This shows you um, an example of a pedigree for uh, MDB gecko echo, gecko echo, and uh, shows you an example of one for spurias. And I've, I've done some others like, and I've listed them here. There's only about probably less than 10 that I've done pedigrees for because it takes a hell of a lot of time to do a pedigree. But when it does exist, like this one for acidulae, this was a Loictaskiae iris, uh, you can click on this and it'll give you the pedigree. And one of the things that's nice about pedigrees are and if you have a cooperation from like, I've had cooperation from Loic. I also have pictured seedlings. So that a lot of times you see acidulae was a offspring of E946A and crossed with E767A. Well, that means nothing to you because you have no descriptions, but what, I've been able to get Loic to do is to go ahead and create, um, excuse me, let me do this back, create a page for each of these. So for example, E9, E76A has a link and there's a page for it. And it says not registered seedling from 2009 cross tetraploid. And its uh, uh, parentage was this. And it gives you a larger picture. So it would be nice if when hybridizers are putting in pedigrees that they might also have pictures of the irises that they're breeding with and put those in as a separate iris in the wiki. And then people can actually see the whole cross and we can develop a pedigree fairly nicely. And if you go to the pedigree section, I'm gonna go back 
for the index and about pedigrees. At the bottom, it gives templates so that you can create your own pedigrees, just like these, either a landscape or a, or a um, can't think of the other word. Um, oh, anyway, portrait. portrait, yeah. Uh, I'm getting old. So, so anyway, hopefully a nice project would be to create, it takes me about a day to create a pedigree just because you have to figure the whole thing out, lay it out and get it all laid out. But having the template can help a lot. And you can just click on one of these templates. I'm not gonna do it now, but uh, it'll open up and you can go ahead and use it and copy it and use it to uh, create a, a pedigree. So I think that would be really nice. And it lets you see what the iris, how it actually uh, had, what the parents looked like. So it's interesting to me because sometimes, uh, let's just go to Kayla's song here. Sometimes this is real logical that the parents would look somewhere, all the parents going further back would look something like the um, plant that was the final result. But sometimes they surprise you and that there might be a yellow iris or something in the parentage and it might turn up later down the line um, in the parentage. And so I really wish we had more parentages, but it's a major project and I hate to get too many people worried about it. Now, a lot of people have asked me about color. One of the things I've tried to play around with this, how would you go about finding an iris that's a certain color? Well, first of all, it's almost impossible because if you think of the tall beardeds, there are about, if I remember correctly, about 33,000 tall beardeds. If I put in a search for yellow tall bearded, I could get 15,000 results. The wiki won't let you do that. You can't go over something like 5,000 results. So if you put in a search that's too big, the wiki's not gonna let you find that search. Also, if you put in a word that's a common word like it or is or by or something like that, alone, it's not gonna search those for you. It'll tell you that it doesn't, it can't do the search. Um, I was stymied for a while in that there was a reg an Irish registered that was named Will, W-I-L-L. -L. And I think it was after Will Plotner actually, but um, I put in Will and the wiki wouldn't let me find me because there were too many Will words in the wiki. It was too common of a word. To, to search, but I could find it by going to uh, tall bearded and W and finding it under the W's. So there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's always a number of ways to get accomplish something. About color though, I, I keep thinking, how could we possibly delineate colors so that people might be able to look at what's there? Now, first of all, uh, if we look under color on the encyclopedia, it gives you information about the color charts. Uh, it gives you information about color classification. It gives you information about color codes. These were codes that were used in the early checklists this is what it looked like from the 1939 checklist. And this is how they tried to divide up color. Now, theoretically in the registration of all the irises before 1939, you have WW or W1 or R5 or S8 or something in this chart. And this is what the chart is supposed to mean. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, that's interesting. Uh, and later they revised the chart. So 
there's another chart. And this was the original here. And this is the revised color classification cart chart. And I thought, well, maybe you could use this for dividing up irises. And this is what I came up with. And this is pretty much historic irises because the chart was used, I can't remember, 1949. Uh, and I think it even went into the 1960s where they were using these color codes and they changed the codes a little bit. So the codes here are not the same as the codes here. Some of them are, and there's some new codes that were added. And you can see that you can sort of look um, what this gallery looks like of just things I put together. But it's very complicated in that how do you, uh, the other thing that people don't realize is that when they were looking at colors and classifying colors on irises, they always started with the standards. I think today most of us have a tendency to start with the falls. So if you had an iris with white falls and yellow standards, in the color codes that AI has put together, it would come under yellow, not white. And you can see what I've tried to do. There's blue, and I just went on down and, and it was doing these. But this takes a lot of time to put these in. And notice there's some that are in and have blanks. Here's one here, here's one here that don't have the picture in. The reason for that is is that I had a picture there, which was probably an old picture that wasn't very good. And somebody removed it from the wiki. And they didn't realize that when they do that, they take it away from every place it's been linked to. So I really hate it when people delete pictures. <laughs> Can I say that again? I really do not like pictures deleted. If you don't believe a picture is the right picture, put a note at the bottom of the page, don't delete it. And I think people are adult enough to see a whole selection of pictures and, and say, okay, this one doesn't fit. Um, let me go to like Ad Admiral Nimitz and see what we've got here. We've only got three pictures there. Uh, remember, they didn't have good. Yeah. Are we supposed to ask questions? I've had my hand raised for quite a while here. Yeah, go ahead. So um, my question is actually on the searching. With there's some a lot of chat questions going on, and we were asking questions there. Um, we're asking how in the actual Iris Encyclopedia, how do you search for just a name? Say I want to search for Iris Concertina. I don't know what type it is, nothing. And I, and you told us you don't want us using all web, right? So no, you can you, when you don't know what it is. So the only search, like, I don't, I don't know how many people search for that. Like, to me, it seems like that's the one thing everyone does is search is just for a name. Is there any way we can, like, if you uh, don't know, you've got to do all the webs. So it's going to come back with like thousands and thousands of stuff. You can't just say well, the name. Here, let's 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 do one. Uh, what was the name of the Rs? Concertina. Yeah, let's just say Concertina. Okay, let's go back to search and let's put in Concertina. Now, if you only want the title, all you have to do is click title and click all public webs. Okay, so you're saying title is cultivar name. Right. Okay, is there any way we can get that changed to, or name of Iris so that it's just easier for people to see and use? No. <laughs> I can tell you this. I didn't that put, at all. Or even put something at the top that says put your name in topic and click topic. Can't do that anything easier. <laughs> I don't think it's too hard to remember that, that that's the topic title. Um, well, other people are- The problem with changing any, 
The problem with changing any of this stuff here is that this was created as FOSS Wiki. Okay, that's the application that we're using. It's a free down at the bottom. See this down here? This is the name of the application. I can't change the application. So there's a lot of stuff that I can't really change. It allows me to do a lot of things and to create a lot of ways of doing things, but I can't always change some basic structure to the application. So this, this whole search mechanism was created by FOSS Wiki. They don't know what we're searching. They don't know that it's iris. They don't know that it's you know automobiles or what. But they they give us free use of their application. And so I can't change the application itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, so Bob, there there have been a few questions, and I didn't want to interrupt while you're in the middle of uh, the thing you were you were doing with. Uh, yeah. Uh, but just to clarify, what you've said is if you don't know what the iris is, then you can go to all webs or, or the, the main web there, put in the name of the iris, and then choose topic title, and that should take you to that iris. Now, there may be right, multiple we'll, irises in different webs. We'll go ahead and do, I put it in. Okay, uh, Concertina appears both in the IB web and in the TB web. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know whether it was, well, we can find out. It might have been changed. One of the things that sometimes happens too, okay, this is the situation. The name was released. So this was the original concertina and the name was released and it, it now not introduced, name released, and it goes to IB concertina. Now, why would we do that? It's because somebody might have had that iris. And even though it wasn't registered, it might be out there and somebody has that name on it. And so when they look up concertina and they say, well, I've got a tall bearded and it looks like this, they know that it wasn't, the name was, they were thought to have destroyed all the, the uh, uh, stock the stock didn't get all destroyed. So the Iris Encyclopedia tries to be as complete as possible. And we have a lot of things. The, the Iris register doesn't have near the amount of different irises as we have because they don't include uh, the bulbous irises. They don't include the species and they don't really include anything but a name or anything before 1949. So there's no source, on, even on the internet, that is more complete than the American Iris Society's encyclopedia. Okay, any more questions? I think that's pretty much it for the uh, the search thing. There, you talk. There was one about the color, and you talked about that. I'm not sure that it satisfies uh, the person uh, asking about color, but let me let me show a couple of things with the color. I'm going to go to miniature tall beardeds. I've been trying to figure out ways in which we could create galleries of colors. But only 50% of the irises on the encyclopedia of the 60, like 70,000 irises on the encyclopedia, only 50% have pictures. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that you ever can get to a point where you have enough that you could be firm about an identification. But let's just take a look at, um, let's see, this is miniature tall bearded. I was trying to do something with color and maybe sort them out by different color groups. This all has to be done by hand. So it's incredibly labor intensive. But you know, here's an example of a bunch of white uh, miniature tall beardeds. I could go back 
and I've got, you know, you, they're sort of color coded so you could find the miniature tall bearded was the smallest, smallest group in which I could uh, do. And I thought, well, maybe that was workable. I don't know how you'd ever do the tall beardeds, but maybe the different small groups. I'm having trouble with my mouse. Um, but essentially, I put together some galleries of colors for irises. And, you know, it becomes a real individual thing. Unfortunately, you know, what one person calls red, another person might say is brown. I don't know any way of solving that problem. There is one hope in the future. And I think this is real interesting, but it doesn't work real well right now. But Google has a Google Images. And if you go to Google Images and look at it, there's a little camera in Google Images. If you click on the camera, it asks you to submit a picture. And you can submit a picture of an iris from your computer. And it will give you the closest things it can find on the internet to that iris. And the first time I did it, I picked a picture that actually I had on the wiki, but I didn't real remember because it was a picture that didn't have a name on it. So when I put it in, I thought, oh my God, it picked out the exact same picture on the wiki and showed it to me and showed me 30 alternatives. But, you know, it got it absolutely dead on. And I thought, wow, you know, this artificial intelligence really works well. But then I found a picture that wasn't on the wiki, that wasn't, wasn't the exact same picture on the wiki, and did that with the Google images. And I got delphiniums and all sorts of things. So it doesn't work real well yet, but I think the artificial intelligence has a possible key to the future of maybe identifying irises. But it'll never be as accurate as one thinks it is unless you had all pictures of all the irises that exist. And we only have 50%. So, you know, we need to do a lot better to get in pictures and multiple pictures of the same iris with clump shots and uh, stem shots and all different features of the iris so that artificial intelligence could learn and decide what an iris is and pick up the iris. So I guess that pretty well covers a lot of the stuff and I didn't get to the library so if anybody wants to stick around a little bit, I can say a little bit about the library. Uh, there's uh, someone says, do the colors match a color code like Pantone? If not, we should standardize. Well, that's difficult to do because there are how many hybridizers and how many, uh, there's 80,000 irises roughly, something like that. There's. It's, it's something I thought about. If you notice these colors here that are on these uh, things, I got these off of a color wheel type um, mechanism that you can pick out the exact color and it gives you a code for the computer code for that color. And theoretically you could match an iris to that code. And it's the code that's used for identifying that color on the internet. And so in theory, it's possible to, to create uh, colors, codes for colors for irises. But remember, an iris isn't one color. You know, there's, there's beards, there's half marks, there's bands around them, there's, you know, standards and falls. So you'd need a color code for every one of those. And there are layers of colors. And yeah, and there's layers, so it's really difficult to do. But, you know, just sort of a rudimentary thing, I tried to do that with uh, selecting these for the MTBs. And, you know, I could still work on this and I could probably get 
almost all of the MDBs put into categories, but what does it really mean? Uh, who's who's going to accept those categories as being official? I don't know that anybody will do that. Uh, there's a couple other uh, questions, which I think are pretty practical ones. One is, what is the file size limit when adding pictures to the wiki? There is none. Okay, so you can add larger photos. Oh, correct? that's something I wanted to show somebody. Um, if we go, I got to find an iris that has a lot of pictures. Let me see if one of these might, um, probably not, but I'll, I'll go there anyway. Now I need one. Let me do um, uh, decadence again, because I know it's got a lot. Name an iris that has a lot of pictures. Let's see. Let's do, just do decadence. Thornbird. Silverado. Okay. Let's do Thornbird. We'll do Thornbird. That'll, that'll be interesting. OK. I just want the main page. And this should take me right there. OK, there's Thornbird. OK, now, if you click on these pictures, notice they open up, and there's a next. And each one's a different size. And I don't know whether I'm going to have a problem with the, can I pull this down? Yeah, next, next, next. Now, some of these are smaller pictures than others, but this is what you get when you go through the gallery. But let's go back a minute. And there's another way to look at these pictures. People ask me all the time, what can I do to print out these pictures for uh, a sale? Going to them like this is not the best way. There's also a list of all the pictures and it has the information about them and who owns them. And if you open up any of these, they, will, they should open up as a uh, larger size picture most of the time, but it's a printable picture. And the other thing is you can see the size of the picture. It gives you, you know, these were all put in that were small, but there could be, well, here's one 200, one 194, but there could be one that's, you know, 20,000. And if it's 20,000 and I click on it, it's going to come up just as a nice page view. It's not going to be, it's not going to be too big, which somebody asked me before when I open it up from here, it comes up too big. But if you open it up from the attachment section, it'll open up as a, a regular size page. So I think that's an important feature to know. Um, and yeah. I guess the rule of thumb is to discover the encyclopedia, look at everything, page down all the way, and you'll find things that you didn't know were there. Right. Any other questions? Well, there's one says, um, Aaron says, Bob, in reference to the question by Jim Palmer about the size, I'd love if you could spend a few minutes talking about how individuals can add a photo to the wiki and how you'd like to see it done. Yeah, it's real easy. That's the probably the easiest thing to do. You just go to attach and you have to find the file on your computer which at the moment I'm not gonna to try to do because it'll take me, it may take us out of the Zoom thing. Um, and then you put in a comment. So what you want other people to know about what it is and any information you want about it. And then you just press upload and that's all there is to it. So it's very simple. The Bob, only thing- don't you have to have a password to do that? Uh, you have to be logged in. Okay. The other, the other thing that can cause a problem is that look at all these pictures. If you look at all the file names, everyone is different. 
if you happen to put in, like somebody may think, well, I just call the picture T.B. Thornburg. Well, somebody else might use that name and put in T.B. Thornburg. If that happens, it creates all sorts of problems with the wiki in that what will happen is when you scroll over the picture, one or the other may come up, but you may not be able to get the thorn, the picture of the file you want. And there's no way to resolve it here because it's the same file name. So be sure when you add a picture that it has a unique file name and that needs to be on your computer. The best way to do that, I think, is just to put your name at the beginning of the name of the picture or your initials and maybe the date. And that way you could be pretty sure that nobody else with your initials and that date are going to upload that file. So it's very simple just to attach it. And there you go. Okay, and thanks. Considering we have, I, my best estimate is 750,000 pictures on the wiki. Um, I'm still anxious to get more because there's a lot of irises that don't have good pictures. Thornbird's great because we've got uh, buds, we've got stalks, we've got all sorts of things. Notice the color variation. This can be due to the weather. It's not necessarily a wrong picture because cooler weather sometimes or a different camera can pick up the color a little differently. Uh, Bob, I just wanted to make a, a short announcement. Uh, we are over the hour um, for the presentation, but we're going to keep going. So um, if you can all stay, if you have to leave, you have to leave, then that's fine. Thank you for being here tonight. But we're going to keep going. Uh, I just wanted to say that this presentation will be posted on YouTube on the AIS uh, YouTube channel uh, within a week. So if, if uh, you started late or something happened, or if you know someone that needs to watch it or wants to watch it, they can go to the uh, YouTube channel and watch it there. So uh, let's continue, Bob, if you don't mind. And Okay, uh, let you. me take you to the library. I'm real proud of the library because I did almost this, 99% of this work I did myself. And uh, if you go to the library, there's reading rooms because there's they had to find some way of dividing up the material. You have a catalog library, you have AIS publications, you have garden literature, which pretty much covers uh, journals and everything under the sun. That's pretty much normal garden literature. There's a section for regional publications and I'm proud to say that with the help of Doug, Doug Chess, we've got the entire region for, uh, for uh, bulletins all the way back to the beginning. Uh, section for cooperating societies. Cigna has a, a huge group of, of um, their newsletters there and all the other societies are welcome to, to uh, add theirs. Uh, the Spuria Society has quite a few. Uh, publication is local affiliates. I try to keep up with that, but I'm really bad. And I owe Claire Schneider a, an apology for not getting up all of the ones she sent me, but uh, I'll hope to get them all up. I'll talk with her in the future again about it. Uh, publications of the World's Irish Societies. I would hope that someday we could get uh, the British Irish Society to allow us to put in all of their publications. We have video, a video library. So videos on YouTube, including the AIS webinars can be found there. Uh, let me just give you a sample of, this was a problem in that there are lots of YouTube presentations. And I wanted people to be able to look easily to them and see what there were. Here's the master list. So you can go down through the master list and you can see that there are at the bottom 77 presentations, YouTube presentations, and those are not including the AIS webinars. Um, whenever 
I have a, a gallery like this of some special feature like catalogs or videos, I try to do a master list, which is actually a um, search. And so this is always up to date. This, the gallery, I have to physically put stuff into. So there may not be 77 videos in that gallery, but there are that you could look through. And I tried to create an index and found it really hard to try to index these to figure out how they should be filed. But I started on it and uh, maybe I'll get back to it, but that's something that somebody could help me out with if they wanted to. Um, so anyway, we'll go back to the, the main reading rooms. One of the things that's nice about the reading rooms is the catalog library. Um, I have it sorted by historic nurseries. So if you're interested in a certain nursery, you can go to the list of nurseries and let's just take Shriners, for example. And here's a gallery of Shriners, but the gallery, remember, has to all be put in by hand. So it's much easier to do a master list, have the master list there of all the catalogs that I have for Shriners. And oops, I hit. Um, back by accident and back to Shriners. And as I get old, my hand gets twitchy and I inadvertently click the mouse. So we can see that there are 28 Shriners catalogs in here, which means obviously I don't have all of them. So you can go by year and see which ones I'm missing. And I would love it if somebody would create a PDF of missing any missing catalog. And all you have to do is attach it, use the same format for the, the um, name of it. In other words, I always put info first, the date, then catalog, and then Shriners. And uh, it'll appear in the master list and everybody can find it. So, that's one of the things I've done with the catalogs. Uh, also, let's go back to catalogs by date. You can pull up, let's say, well, let's do an early one just because it's short. Uh, 1883, there were only two catalogs, but in 1914, closer to the Irish Society's formation, there were more. And actually in the master list, there were 20. I haven't gotten all of them into the gallery yet. Because remember, I have to do each one of those in this table by hand, uh, putting it in. So it takes a long time to do that. But I think it's sort of nice to be able to look at the gallery to see what the catalogs look like, because some of them obviously are not gonna like, this one is a real important catalog, but it's not a, a color, it's a copy, it's not a color version of it. Uh, let me go back. And what I, what I wanted to show you too, is when you go to the library, and this is true of a lot, a lot of the catalogs, but let's go to AIS publications. Okay, obviously the bulletin would be an AIS publication. So if we look at AIS publications, we see registrations, introductions, bulletins. Let's go to bulletins. Somebody asked me how to find a bulletin. This gives you a list of all the bulletins. And let's take just I'm just grabbing one at random. Uh, this gives you the four bulletins for that year. You can open up one of the bulletins by clicking on it. 
And in this case, the bulletins are actually in the, the Biodiversity Heritage Library. And one of the reasons why I like that is it's really easy to use. And you can go through the bulletin page by page. Um, it'll, the pages will appear if you just wait. But one of the things that's neat is you can do a search inside the bulletin. And let's say I wanted to search for Iris Aphila, I can see it's actually in there. It'll give me a list of all the pages that Iris Aphila appears on. And then you can click on a page and it'll give you that page. So any word, it can be a person's name uh, or any subject that you're trying to research. I think it's really easy to do it this way. I don't know how easy it is to do that uh, on the cat on the uh, bulletins on the um, on the website. But uh, to me, the Biodiversity Heritage Library is a great resource, and they've allowed me to link to it for all sorts of things. So a lot of the catalogs that appear and so forth are in the Biodiversity Heritage Library. There's a question, Bob. Uh, it says, can the library help me find specific iris to purchase? Specific iris what? To purchase. No. If you wanted um, a list of nurseries, you could do that. Uh, so let's say we wanted to go to, the only problem is recent nurseries, a lot of them have put their, um, their stuff online. And so I don't have a physical uh, copy of their catalog because their catalog's online. And I have created copies of websites. This is the catalog library. And I'm not sure how up to date it is for years, but let's go to the date and go to the most recent year, say 2019. And I only have one catalog in 2019 because that's all, that's the only one that was submitted to me. I can't put something up unless I have it. Uh, see 2018. Some of these are a little better than others. Some of them I worked at to get the catalogs, but this gives you a nice list. And here's the list, the master list of uh, catalogs. So any of these catalogs might, because it's fairly recent, they might have catalogs. So you have a list of possible nurseries, but unless the nursery helps me out by sending me a catalog and I can get it into the wiki, uh, it's not going to appear here for somebody to find. So there are copyright rules for uh, laws for otherwise uh, putting, putting newer catalogs in. Right. I have to have permission from the catalog to put their catalog up, uh, the newest catalogs. Actually, I can put up catalogs all the way up until almost 1979 without permission because that's when the, the copyright law changed for catalogs. Yep. So uh, the wiki is much more complete with catalogs before 1979, but even from 1949 to 1979, it's very weak on the number of catalogs. And yet, if you look at the, the library, the total number of things in the library, I like, this is sort of a fun thing to do. Uh, if you wanted to find out how many items are in the library, you can go to the librarian's card file and it'll take a minute or two, but right now it loads and it shows 4,762 items in the IRIS library. And there's also an, a library of IRID literature. So there's 541 in the IRID literature 
and total I've put in over 5,000 items in the iris in the library. But if you wanted to do a library card file search, this is what would happen. It'll take a minute because it's pulling up five, 4,000 items, 4,700 at least. Okay, it's still not done yet because the, the uh, sidebar hasn't appeared. There it is. Okay, that's how long it took to pull up that many items. And if I go all the way down to the bottom, it says currently there are 4,788 items in the library. Each one, uh, you could go through, <coughs> pick a date, and you could see what there is for that date under all the different types of items in the library. That's probably excessive, but it's there. Now, somebody may ask, what are the, what's the good of all these old catalogs? Well, a good part of it is the fact that uh, the old registrations had practically nothing in the registration. And the 39 checklist usually would have something like blue, and that was about it, and then the color code, which meant very little. But if you go to the 39 checklist, it also lists the catalogs that have that iris that they got the, that they recognized as good quality descriptions. And so you could take the, the, the uh, catalogs listed in the 39 checklist and find them either by date or by historic nurseries and find the uh, description of the historic iris. And we try to put those in the reference section. So we copy and paste it into the rec rec reference section under each iris. That's something that's been a work in progress for a long time. And it's got a long ways to go. So the Iris Encyclopedia, because of the help of hundreds of people, and as I should especially mention Betsy Higgins and Terry Lauren and John Black, uh, and there's hundreds of others that have done tons of work. Uh, we have 82,000 pages and 750,000 pictures, and that's what's there. Any questions? Uh, let's see. And it could be twice that for the future if we would have diligent work on it. So Bob, in the future, if people um, want to help, uh, they can reach you directly, right? Right, remember my name's at the bottom of every page. Uh, if you go to the main page, you can also say contact yeah. us. There's over 80,000 different irises and 33,000 are tall periods. So I like 33,000. And Bob, uh, what, what is some of the volunteer work that people may do and how often and uh, how little and how much? Uh, people can do as much as they want. Anything is appreciated. Uh, scanning a, and making a PDF of a regional bulletin, uh, uh, scanning and making a PDF of a, of a um, catalog and attaching it to, you know, even if you can't attach it to the catalog page, I can create a page for it if it need be and, and you can attach it to it and you've done a, a hell of a lot of work because a, a lot of times when I was putting in catalogs, which remember there are um, something like, I'm trying to think, uh, get the number right. I think there's, well, I should, I'll look in the library, tell me how many are there. I think there's 2000 some catalogs. It took almost a day to do two or three catalogs and some days, sometimes a day for just one to scan it in. So um, this there's 2,300 and 
18 catalogs. Actually, to be up to date, all catalogs listed in the master list, I can click on that and it'll give me the list just like the master list for all, all the things in the library. <clears throat> 